Welcome to another episode of the Mostly Mike Show. Today you might say that I'm living La Viva Loco. My friends at Viva had sent me this bandsaw for review, so full disclosure, I did not pay for this bandsaw and it was sent to me in exchange for making an honest review video. I'll go over its features, then demonstrate on some various materials how well it cuts. I'll include this in my Amazon store, which by clicking the link, even if you don't buy anything, really helps this channel improve future content with small commissions that I earn from any purchase. Without further delay, let's see what's in the box. The Viva Portable Bandsaw came packaged well. It came with two blades, which look to be 14 teeth per inch. It's an owner's manual for uh, three Allen wrenches. And of course the bandsaw itself, along with the user manual. The bandsaw looks and feels pretty good out of the box and has a color scheme sort of reminiscent of the Milwaukee Porta Band. The Viva Portable Bandsaw did not come with the blade installed, but I'll demonstrate how to install the blade. And speaking of the blades, the saw does take the standard 44 and 7 8 inch blades for handheld bandsaws that you can buy at most retailers. So first of all, we're going to want to make sure that the machine's unplugged. So it took me a little bit to figure this out because there, I did not find it anywhere in the instruction manual, but we got to take this cover and that cover off. And for that, you're just going to need a Phillips screwdriver, which is not included, but I think if you're going to own a saw like this, you probably have a couple Phillips screwdrivers laying around. So there's one screw here and there's one screw here right by the, uh, the blade guides. And run this out make sure you don't lose them first of all there's a blade tensioning lever behind the bottom wheel you want to go all the way loose to allow the blade to go on I'll demonstrate what happens by showing the opposite side while I operate the lever note on each wheel that there's an arrow indicating the direction of rotation this means that the teeth of the blade will need to point toward the handle and the vise in order for the saw to cut. You'll probably want to wear cut resistant gloves while handling the blade. We'll now need to take the protective white cover off the blade by simply, um, jerking it off. We'll then orient the blade so the teeth are pointing towards the handle and the vise. And we're going to carefully situate it around the wheels and by carefully grabbing the back side of the blade between the ball bearing guides, give it a slight twist until it aligns between the blade guides and it should pop right in as shown. While holding the blade in place, give the saw a reach around to the blade tensioning lever. Then move it to about midpoint and you will start to feel some resistance. You don't need to get too crazy on the amount of tension. Just a little bit further than when you meet the resistance should be fine. We'll then install the two covers with the corresponding Phillips screws. And that pretty much does it for prepping the saw to cut. Before we get into any cutting though, I want to take a few moments to talk about a few of the saw's features that I noticed while unboxing. The saw turns on and off with a trigger switch conveniently located on the D handle. Above midpoint on the saw body is a small rocker switch. This is to turn on a small LED light to illuminate the area where the business is being done. This is a feature that can really come in handy at times. So last night was a total disaster. I did some filming and I realized that my shotgun mic wasn't turned on. And I mentioned some of the details about the vise and what I liked about it. You know, so instead of turning this 8 million times to open it all the way up, you just flip this little trigger and you can take the vise to wherever you want. I think it's a maximum capacity according to the instructions of about five inches and then you just tighten it as you normally would. A feature that really jumped out at me is to make angle cuts, you don't have to release the vise as you do in most abrasive type chop saws. Instead, the saw itself pivots. Pretty cool. It has a built-in lever that you just lift up on to get optimal positioning to loosen or tighten after making adjustments. This allows for precise alignment if you need to follow a scribed line from a protractor or a sliding T-bevel. At this point, it was getting dark out and I was ready to call it a night. 
but I was so excited to try the saw out that I just had to cut a piece of angle iron to see how the Viva portable band saw cuts. Now this particular angle iron is stuff that I cut out from the hitch of my RV for some modifications I did. It's not really genuine angle iron, but stuff that was folded in a break as you can see by the rounded corner. But I'm going to just square the ends up to see how it does. This is where my state of the art sound effects will enhance the experience. I'm definitely not used to getting cuts this smooth when I'm fabricating stuff. Anyone who owns an abrasive chop saw can relate to the pain in the butt of having to grind or file the burr off that is left by an abrasive blade, as well as the noise and the smells associated, but we'll get into that stuff later. Tomorrow we'll get into some bigger and better things to cut. So it is now tomorrow and we have the saw set back up and ready to go. A friend of mine suggested the challenge of making a couple 45 degree miter cuts on some 2 inch square steel tubing and then checking them for square after they're matched up. What I like about it is, on most of these saws, you're pivoting the vise, and you're pivoting the back jaw of the vise, actually, to make the miter cut, and the front jaw pivots. Um, we're going to get lined up here. I hope this short piece is long enough. I don't want to really waste much of my good um, square stock, square tubing stock. All right, here it goes. 45 degree cut on two inch square tubing. I think it did too bad. It, did, it wasn't laboring or anything. Now these pieces are going to be a little bit warm when they come out. Man, look at that cut. I mean, it's... That's ready to weld almost, other than just beveling the edges a little bit. Let's cut the other one. Again, I don't want to waste any more than I have to. I think we're pretty good right there. We'll make sure we're good for up and down. All right, guys, here goes cut number two. Two inch by two inch tubing. Quarter inch wall. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, these are unground, unfouled. They're not deburred or anything, but as you can see, both, both cuts look freaking perfect. So I'm gonna match them together, just like that. And I'm gonna take the square. Man, they are close to perfect. Unbelievable. I'm gonna try to get the camera at a better angle here. And this picnic table might be a little bit off. Let me get them all on one board here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to try to hold this straight up above. Better yet, let's, uh, let's try it this way. I like it. Now let's check it for 90 the other direction. Tell you what, buddy, we're not building a Swiss watch here, but I think it looks pretty good. My next cut was on a piece of aluminum extrusion just over four inches in width and about an inch thick. And again, that's aluminum extrusion. Pretty good. I'm not going to complain at all about that. My next test was on a piece of 3 inch PVC Schedule 40 pipe.
like freaking butter. Now. And it cuts it perfectly square too. Now, I'm gonna go for a really thin cut. I mean like really thin. Alright guys, now here's an idea of the precision of this saw. <laughs> Look how thin of a cut that is. That's pretty amazing right there. I don't know if I can get that on my miter saw to actually cut like that without throwing this piece or ripping it all up. That is super amazing, I think. After performing all of these cuts, I have to say that I'm super impressed with the Viva Portable Bandsaw for making quick, smooth, and accurate cuts without having to make any fancy adjustments away from the factory settings. The factory blade remains sharp after making many cuts through a variety of materials. Some of the features that I really liked are as follows. The quick adjust vise is very handy to have when you are cutting a wide variety of material widths. The saw is very portable and relatively lightweight at around 30 pounds. I really like that the saw itself pivots instead of the vise. The saw is super quiet compared to conventional chop saws and has much less flying debris. There is also no hazardous dust, sparks, or loud noise when compared to abrasive chop saws. The cuts are relatively smooth with very little burrs to deal with. We all know what a pain abrasive chop saws can be when dealing with burrs. The other advantage over an abrasive chop saw is that as the abrasive blade wears down, so does your cutting capacity. With the Viver portable bandsaw, you have less flying debris, no sparks which can be a fire hazard, and smoother cuts without the hazardous noise and dust. The saw seems to have plenty of power and speed to cut through most common materials. I really don't have anything bad to say about the Viver portable bandsaw. It met or exceeded any of my expectations. I included it in my Amazon store, and if you're interested in helping this channel improve future uploads, you can do it by clicking on that link. At the time of this video, Viver has a $15 coupon, which makes it a killer deal. And you, my friend, deserve a killer deal, so go treat yourself to one today and go fabricate something awesome. I would like to thank the kind folks at Viver for sending me this bandsaw and helping make this video happen. I hope that you got some entertainment, and I hope that I at least answered most of your questions that you might have about the Viva Portable Bandsaw. If you have any questions or comments, or want to tell me your bandsaw fantasies, please tell me all about it in the comments below. I can't wait to read about them. Please smash that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video, and consider subscribing if you're new here. Thanks for watching this Mostly Mike Show presentation, and I'll see you next time.